Hello, my name is Arturo Villarreal and I will be your lecturer today and today the subject we'll be dealing with uh, for the Toltecs. The term Toltecayot is a term that you find in the old manuscripts, the oldest term associated with the Toltecs. Of course you have the term Toltecat and then Toltecas. <clears throat> this is a name that is synonymous with master artisans and master architects. The name Toltec derives from their city, Tolan, therefore Toltecs, the people from Tolan, otherwise known as Tula. Tolan refers to place of the reeds, um, interpretation, place of abundance, place where you find a lot of water, uh, sustenance. It's a metaphor for metropolis. And there's other Tolanes, like you have Teotihuacan Cholan, uh, you have uh, Cholula Tolan. Uh, but this Tolan is the Tolan associated with the Toltecs. So here we have a timeline, Mesoamerican timeline, just to put the, the Toltecs in, in, uh, in perspective, right? During the pre-classic period, uh, and by the way, the civilizations you see here in this timeline are just the, the main ones, the dominant civilizations that surfaced in Mexico. There were dozens of others. The very first civilization in all of North America were the Olmecs, and they were followed by the Zapotecs, who were part of the uh, late pre-classic period. The Zapotecs are those who gave us the very first writing in the Americas and also the very first calendar in the Americas as well. Uh, as we move into the classic period, we see the, uh, the ascent of Teotihuacan, the very first city in the Americas. You find the, very, uh, the third largest pyramid there, the Pyramid of the Sun, as well. Um, after the uh, Teotihuacanes declined, uh, it was the Mayans who surfaced during the uh, late classic period. And uh, the Mayans uh, are said to be, by most experts, uh, the greatest civilization during the classic period. They gave us zero. Uh, they were excellent mathematicians, excellent astronomers. And as a result, they gave us one of the most accurate calendars. <clears throat> Opening up the post-classic period were the Toltecs, who we will be addressing today, uh, and they were followed by the Mixtecs, and the very last civilization, of course, were the Aztecs. So let's move on with the uh, Toltecs, a little bit of um, uh, geography here. We see that Tula is located in the Valley of Mexico, central Mexico very close to uh, Mexico City, also very close to Teotihuacan. All are maybe 30, 40 miles away from each other. This particular map um, showcases uh, that how it is that it more than likely it was people who came from the north, the Chichimecas who came in to, to make up uh, uh, the Toltecs, as well as other groups that we'll address later. Uh, and that is showcased by the, the red arrows. Uh, by way of the green arrows, we see how it is that uh, Toltec culture was transmitted to other areas in, in, uh, in Mexico. First of all, uh, the Tolteca Chichimeca. Probably the original Nahuatl speakers who founded the Toltec state. Once again, the Chichimecas came from the northern territories, the desert areas. Uh, their leader was Mishkoat, uh, translation cloud serpent. Then you have the Nonualcas. Uh, these were highly civilized leaders, priests, merchants, and craftsmen. They may have come, uh, come from the Gulf Coast, but more than likely they came from Teotihuacan. Uh, and these were probably the middle and upper classes who were forced to leave Teotihuacan. So all of this suggests that migration played a major role in the formation of the Toltec civilization. Here we see the, uh, the layout of Tolan, otherwise known as Tula, right? sometimes referred to in the ancient manuscripts as Tolan, Chico Cotitlan. And we're going to uh, 
began with Pyramid C, also referred to as the Temple of the Sun. And then we're going to work our way around uh, to take a look at uh, Pyramid B, um, the Temple of uh, Tlahuiscal Pantecutli, um, one of Quetzalcoatl's uh, incarnations, right? As uh, Venus, the morning star, Tlahuiscal Pantecutli. And then we're just going to proceed to work our way around. Um, <clears throat> so let's begin by taking a look at Pyramid C, otherwise referred to as Temple of the Sun. Well, keep in mind we're looking at what's left, of course, right? Uh, we're not looking at how uh, it was originally. But um, one thing I'd like to point out is that they did borrow from the uh, Teotihuacan uh, architecture. And, and this is showcased by what's called the Talu Tablero type of architecture taken from uh, Teotihuacan. And um, so from here, let's look across at Pyramid B, otherwise known as the Temple of Tlahuiscal Pantecutli, because this will give us a clue as to what pyramid uh, the other pyramid must have looked like. As we get closer to the temple of Tlahuiscal Pantecutli, as we look towards the top, we see uh, the Atlantis. This has to be the most dominant symbol associated with the Toltecs. This is what they're known by. Just like people know the Olmecs by their, those large colossal heads, um, this is the uh, symbol that defines the, the Toltecs. They're called Atlantis because <clears throat> These are actually warrior figures, and they're carrying at their side uh, what's called the Atl At, A-T-L, A-T-L, and that is the spear thrower, therefore the Atlantis figures. Notice the uh, butterfly chest plate, right, uh, as well. And also uh, the protective gear uh, at the rear as well. So we bet we, we by way of uh, this artwork, we see what they must have looked like originally, the color as well. And this is one that was taken from Tolan that's now placed in the uh, Museo de Antropología in Mexico City. So we see by this uh, artwork here that they were used to raise, to hold up the roofs of this particular building, right? Uh, close to the entranceway. And by the entranceway, <clears throat> uh, holding up the, the, the entranceway are um, images of Quetzalcoatl. One thing I'd like to point out is the Chakmul. That's the character, that the reclining figure um, at the foreground of the entrance. This is a Chakmul. This is also uh, a distinctively Toltec. And uh, this is another symbol that defines the Toltecs. This reclining figure is uh, holding uh, <clears throat> a receptacle, and, and uh, this was used as uh, off for offerings of different sorts. The wall of this particular building, <clears throat> at the very top, you see a procession of uh, jaguars. Below that, you see images of, of Tlahuiscal Pantecutli, uh, Venus the Morning Star, Below, you see images of coyotes. These were uh, from the coyote um, warriors. And at the, at the very bottom, <clears throat> at the very bottom, you see an eagle devouring heart, a heart. And there's a nice uh, close-up of this particular eagle devouring a heart. And there's a close-up of a jaguar. And these were the various images, right, that uh, that uh, you found around this particular uh, temple of Tlahuiscal Pantecutli. At the rear of, of this um, temple, you find a very interesting wall, a Cuauhtepantli. And uh, what you see in the middle is uh, uh, skulls emerging from uh, the mouths of a serpent. So 
here is the layout of um, Tolan once again, Tula. And we've addressed the two pyramids. And uh, be, behind the, the temple of Tlawis Calpantecutli, you find one of two um, ball courts. Very interesting place because most places only have one ball court. But here you see two. <clears throat> but next to this temple of Tlawis Calpantecutli, you have you have these um, these hallways and uh, these banquet halls and this is where uh, many dignitaries would come in to uh, for meetings and and other occasions uh, festive occasions as well at the center uh, it must have looked like this this is an artist rendition of what, what one of these halls must have looked like um, at the very top I know it's very difficult to make out but um, you see images of, of uh, sun disks and images of reclining figures thought to be uh, represent deceased emperors. Buried in the middle uh, of this, and actually the, uh, the, the, the middle um, hallway, you found this solar disk. Also, this warrior shield buried uh, together. You also find many chop mules uh, there uh, at this Palacio Quemado, so-called because uh, when when uh, people first came across uh, this place, uh, it was all it was all burnt. And you find some chop mules that have been uh, decapitated, right? Beheaded. I'll get more into this story later as to why. Uh, behind you see very interesting benches. And if you take a closer look at these benches, at the very top you see uh, images of Quetzalcoatl. And below you see a procession of warriors. We're going to see this in another location a little bit later. So getting back to the layout of uh, <coughs> Tolan, um, we're going to move over to the central uh, area where you find the altar, a small altar at the middle. Okay, But next to it, in green is a skull rack. And the skull rack is another thing that's very distinctively uh, uh, Toltec, right? The skull rack. And it is right in front of um, one of the ball, uh, ball courts. So there's the altar in the middle. And to your left, you see this, what's left of the skull rack. It's difficult to make out because there's really nothing to see. However, I want to show you this skull rack, this Sompantli, because this is one that you find in Chichen Itza. And more than likely, this was one that was uh, built by the Toltecs in Chichen Itza. We'll get into that story a little bit later. And here's the other ball court, right? That's next to the skull rack. And <clears throat> what I'd like to point out is that next to this ball court is a temescal, in other words, a sweat lodge. And this is uh, where many of the players before or after the game would come in to purify themselves right? in this sweat lodge, temescal. Here's ball court number two, the one behind uh, the temple of Tlawis Calpantecutli. These are Atlantis, smaller Atlantis figures that were used to hold up uh, doorways. This one was used to hold a staff, a staff. And this is a sun disk associated with the Toltecs. And this is um, an image that many people refer to as a coyote warrior, because that is a coyote uh, at the uh, on the outside, you see an image of the coyote, but in the inside, uh, most experts say that's an image of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, right? So here we have, uh, once again, Tula, uh, Tolan, the, the city associated with the Toltecs, in green. But notice, um, they had an influence on the Yucatan, that area that most people know uh, associated with Cancun, right? A tourist spot. And I want to discuss their influence, the Toltec influence in uh, the Yucatan. 
because they influence Chichen Itza, but they also influence Mayapan as well. But I'd like to focus on Chichen Itza because this is the place that most people are familiar with. And as we look at this image of Chichen Itza, we see a very interesting uh, temple or pyramid in the center. And that's a, t a pyramid to Quetzalcoatl. Of course, the um, <clears throat> Mayas didn't uh, call um, the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl. They called him by their own language, Kukulkan, which means the same thing. This showcases the uh, Toltec influence in Chichen Itza. One example. But notice the Temple of the Warriors. Uh, this may look very familiar to you because this looks very much like uh, the Palacio Quemado we were looking at in Tolan with all the, the colonnades. And uh, if this is not enough, if you take a closer look at the top, of this Temple of the Warriors, you see a chop mul. And um, once again, this was originally something you found only amongst the Toltecs. And behind the, uh, the chop mul, you see the exact type of um, images of Quetzalcoatl. We saw at the doorway of the Palacio Quemado in Tula. Here's another chop mul that was found uh, in Chichen Itza. More Toltec influence there. Again, the Pyramid of Kukulkan, the Feathered Serpent. We're now looking at an image of the largest ball court in Mesoamerica, which is in Chichen Itza. And notice, um, right next to it, you find uh, the Sompantli, the Skull Reich which again originated with the Toltecs, but even, eventually you find that amongst the, the, uh, the Maya. All of these are examples of um, Toltec influence in Chichen Itza. I'd like to now transition to the story of Quetzalcoatl, because you cannot tell the story of the Toltecs without telling the story of, of Quetzalcoatl. First of all, um, first and foremost, uh, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, was a lord of creation amongst uh, Teotihuacan. It was in Teotihuacan that you have this, the whole story of, the, of the, the Quinto Sol, or the five suns, or the five worlds. It starts there in Teotihuacan. And Quetzalcoatl was one of the lords of creation. And so this is something that the Toltecs took from Teotihuacan. Maybe those who, were, who came in uh, brought that in to Tolan. And so <clears throat> Quetzalcoatl is also uh, associated with Lord of the Wind as well. And e Ehecat would be the name of Lord of the Wind, Ehecat. Okay, so in this image here we see uh, one of the early Toltec emperors, Mishkoat, Cloud Serpent. And he comes across this woman, the very first woman we know in Mex uh, of in Mexico by name. Her name is Chimalma, uh, which translates to hand shield. So Mishkoat is out hunting. He comes across Chimalma. And for some reason, I, forget, I, I don't know the details, but he, he doesn't like her. And he starts shooting arrows at her, right? But she's Chimalma, she's hand shield, so she deflects. And, and this anger eventually evolves into uh, admiration. And they eventually get married. And <clears throat> when they marry, she eventually becomes impregnated because she ingests a jade stone, the most precious stone associated with uh, the uh, ancient Mexico and she becomes impregnated and she gives birth to a very important child by the name of Se Akat Topilsin. Translation, our prince from the year one read is born. Chimalma dies during childbirth. The father is soon afterwards killed by his own brother who lusts for power. So 
Se Akatopusi in this child, right? Our prince of the year one read is uh, raised by the maternal grandparents and the maternal grandparents uh, they bring him up to, re, uh, to revere Quetzalcoatl, the Lord of Creation. And he's taught all the philosophy associated with Quetzalcoatl, the Lord of Creation. And, and uh, so <clears throat> this child eventually takes on the name Quetzalcoatl because he so reveres Quetzalcoatl. And he becomes Quetzalcoatl, the person. And he avenges his father's death and he eventually becomes a, a, a Toltec uh, emperor, and he is the one who brought them up to greatness. Uh, he brought in the, the vast amounts of wisdom, knowledge, uh, corn, cacao beans, uh, precious quetzal feathers. Uh, there was an abundance of everything uh, when, when he reigned, when he ruled um, Tula. And he also sought to transform Toltec society. As a matter of fact, he sought to outlaw um, uh, sacrifice. And because of all of this, he was very highly revered. He was very, very popular, except for a few people who um, plotted against him, who plotted his downfall. And so <clears throat> what they did was the leader, Tezcatlipoca, presented Quetzalcoatl with a, uh, a, a gift wrapped in cotton. And Quetzalcoatl didn't know that this was gonna be a trick mirror. And when he unwrapped uh, the, the gift, he was staring into this trick mirror, which made him look all deformed and, and shocked him, as was the plan. So Tezcatlipoca then brings him a dream you know, uh, supposedly to calm him down, like here, Quetzalcoatl, take this drink. Little did Quetzalcoatl know that this was a, a drink that was full of hallucinogens and uh, pulque, you know, magic mushrooms, peyote. His sister was also summoned to partake in this and drink. The very next morning, they found him buck naked, laying next to each other. He awakens from this and, and he's so ashamed that, you know, he, he basically tells everybody, you know, I've, I've shamed my family, I've shamed my people, I have no recourse but to leave. And, and so, you know, of course his, his closest uh, allies, his uh, associates, they try to, you know, convince him this was all a trick, but, you know, he wasn't having that. So for the next year, he decided to uh, um, go on a pilgrimage throughout Mexico before he left for good. And so all uh, during the course of this, uh, this pilgrimage, he's uh, <clears throat> traveling all through Mexico and, and people are wanting him to stay there uh, with him and, and, and share uh, you know, his wisdom and knowledge before he departs. And this is what he does. And all along the way, he's, uh, he's uh, engaging in auto sacrifice. <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, as you look at these images of Quetzalcoatl, He's uh, very well known for this uh, this conch seashell, right? Which is a, an emblem associated with the, the wind. At the end of his pilgrimage, he he's on the east coast, and he tells his people, his followers, before he leaves, I will return one day. I will return in the year one read, and I will return at this very same spot from which I'm leaving. And there's a couple of different stories in regards to how he departs. One story actually has him um, <clears throat> jumping into a, 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 a pyre, a, a, a big bonfire, and as soon as he does, there's like thousands of quetzal feather, uh, quetzal birds that just flutter all around. Right. Uh, the most popular story is that. Quetzalcoatl gets on a, a raft made of serpents and he takes off and right before he gets to that point where you can no longer see him, the raft explodes, he shoots up into the sky and he, he transforms into Venus, the morning star. It's, uh, you often hear that when Quetzalcoatl uh, leaves, 
soon after you have the decline of the Toltec Empire. So, what led to the decline of the Toltec Empire? Some say there was a Chichimeca invasion from the north. Others say there might have been a drought that occurred. Some say there might have been an internal struggle. Between who? Between the two groups of people who founded the Toltecs, the Chichimecas and the Teotihuacanes. Others say the struggle began with Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, but continued with their followers. And that might have led to the decline. In any case, by the 12th century, there was destruction, burning, and pillaging by the Aztecs. And let's address that now. Here we see one of the pages from the Codis Boturini. Now, if you look at the far left, I'm sure you're going to recognize that symbol. That's the symbol for Tolan, right? The Toltec city. What are the Aztecs doing there? They were on their pilgrimage from Aslan, which many people say is Four Corners area of the Southwest, into Mexico City to discover, well, to discover Mexico City, right? They were on their pilgrimage at this time. They stopped in Tula, and as you can see by the various symbols there, they stopped there for 20 years. So they spent quite a bit of time in Tula. Why? Because, you know, keep in mind the Toltecs have, had fled Tula by this time. Why? Because they knew all about the Toltecs. Of course they did. Right? The Toltecs were a great civilization, right? And they ruled for quite a bit of time. And, uh, and so they wanted to honor the Toltecs. They wanted to also learn from them. By the way, they did take the idea or the concept, the story of Quetzalcoatl as well from the Toltecs. They also um, borrowed many other ideas and they wanted to claim direct descendancy from the Toltecs so they had their princesses marry the remaining Toltecs who happened to be living around the, er you know, uh, the areas, right? The surrounding areas. Let's take a look at the Aztec Templo Mayor, right? or what it looked like before it was destroyed by the Spaniards. We take a close look at this temple. At the very apex, at the very top of this temple, you will see a chakmul. In this particular chakmul, it is said that was taken directly from Tolan. So when the Aztecs were in Tolan, they did take uh, statues and chakmuls from there uh, but they also uh, decapitated some why I don't know the temple of the warriors in uh, the Aztec uh, city of Mexico Tenochtitlan you will see an exact replica of the bench that you saw in Tolan notice at the very top you see uh, Quetzalcoatl and below you see a uh, procession of, of, of warriors. Here we see the Sompantli, the skull rack. Uh, another concept borrowed from the Toltecs. Directly in front of the, ma the main temple, or Templo Mayor, this conical shaped um, structure is um, a pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. And I end this presentation with an image, with a statue, I should say, of Quetzalcoatl that we find in downtown San Jose. So here in San Jose, we also find the Toltec influence at Cesar Chavez Plaza.